please welcome back to the stage Davin Salvano. I could not be more excited than to share with you our closing speaker for the Purpose Summit. For the last you know, three, four years, we've had multiple speakers that have come to the Purpose Summit. We've uh, had some that have spoken here once, twice, three times. One of those is a mutual friend of, of Nick and I's, Scott Miller. Scott happens to be uh, my, my literary and speaking agent, but a very, very dear friend. And he's been telling me for years, you need to have Nick come and speak at the Purpose Summit. And I said, I would love to have Nick come and speak at the Purpose Summit, but I don't know Nick. So our friend Scott introduced us, and I asked uh, him would he come. And Nick graciously uh, said, yes, I will come. And so I'm not going to take any more time on the stage because the words and the story of my incredible friend here, Nick, are more important than anything more that I could share today. So without any further ado, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce Nick Fortune. Give me a hug. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Good afternoon. Check, check. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. I am so honored that I am your closing speaker. Can you turn me down just a little bit? Because I want to open up my pipes a little bit. It is uh, my privilege and honor, uh, first of all, to be here for the first time at Notre Dame University. Thank you so much for having me. What a beautiful campus. Incredible reputation. God bless you all. I also want to thank Scott Miller. I don't know if Scott's listened to me. He's, uh, he's heard me before, so he's probably not in the room. But I just want to acknowledge him as one of my... Here he is my closest friends over the last probably three, four years who checked up on me, who called me, who uh, had me at his home. I had a privilege of coming to Utah to be with his family many, many times. And when COVID happened, you can imagine what happened to every single speaker. We went crazy. And Scott helped me not to go too crazy. Uh, and he has been such a dear friend. And congratulations for the speaking agency that you have Grain Miller, love you so much, Scott. God bless you. Uh, Davin, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I want to acknowledge as well the team that actually puts on the Purpose Summit. Do you know how much work this is to pull this off? Can we thank the Purpose Summit people? Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. We love it. Awesome. So uh, put your hand up if you've seen me on the internet. Put your hand up. You see me on the internet? Good. Check, it out. Check out the room. Okay, pretty much everyone. Okay, cool. Uh, put your hand up if this is the first time you've seen me face to face. Awesome. Hi. Um, I live now in the United States of Texas. Uh, I am so blessed to get out of California. And I was in California for 17, 18 years. And I am so blessed uh, to be a citizen of the U.S. Uh, I, I, I was born and raised in Australia. Um, and I became a speaker. I'll, t I'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, as an Aussie, you know, when, when, you, when you understand the world from Australia, Australia is very far from just about every country, right? And when I started traveling around the world at age 19, and you start going to see places and meet people. I, I look at everyone in the eyes. The eyes are the windows to your soul. And when I look at you, you look at me. Soon you might actually forget that I have no limbs. And when I look you in the eye, it's me subconsciously looking at you and telling you you matter and that you have my undivided attention to the point where you're the only one in the room. And this is called connectivity. This is called connection. And in 03, when I was able to go to another country called Cambodia, my first country going was South Africa and then Indonesia and then Cambodia. And I'll tell you right now, as I look around the world and we look at now 8 billion people, you know, it, it's interesting as... As we all have different belief systems, as a Christian, the greatest commandment is loving God. The second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. What that actually means is love the world. Love the world. Love everyone in the world. You may not agree with a lot of the stuff going on in the world. There's a lot of things that if you and I just sat enough times together, you're going to find something that I disagree with you on. Period. 
But we are commanded to love each other. We're commanded to make the world a better place. And as I went to Cambodia, it was the first time that I actually saw poverty with my own eye. I'd known about poverty, right? As a kid, you watch the World Vision, you know, advertisements on television. And my parents always told me as a teenager, Nick, get as many passports as possible because you have no idea what the world's going to look like. My parents came from communism regime, former Yugoslavia and Serbia, 1962. My mom was 60 years old when the military came, took over their house, kicked them out of the house, kicked them on the curbside, and sent my grandfather to jail. My dad was 15 years old when military came to their house and took my dad's dad, put him in jail because of their doctrine of being pacifists. They did not believe in shooting. And so they were beaten, they were starved, they were abused, they were in jail. And then they said, with God's pointing guns to their head, uh, is it against your religion to go pick up wounded soldiers? If it's against your religion to kill someone, is it against your religion to save someone? They said no. So they went out on the medic field, and my grandfather, one of them got shot. He survived, got his family, picked them up, fled. Fled. Went into Austria, went into refugee camps. My mom's dad, when he was deployed on the medic field, he didn't help a wounded soldier. He just ran home. And as soon as he found his wife and his kids, hundreds of miles away, picked them up and said, we're, we're out of here. And they went. Refugee camps. Went to Australia with nothing. My mom and dad, they always told me, Nick, be thankful for what you have. Nick, there's a greater plan and purpose for your life. Nick, there's going to be times when the world's not going to want you. And remember, when you have something in your hand to, to have, just remember the people who have nothing. This is how I was raised. When I went to the shopping mall, we are so selfish. Our human nature is so selfish, so self-centered, so prideful. It's unbelievable how selfish we really are where we even subconsciously have this subliminal pride of knowing who we are, and that's our identity. I identify myself as a good person who does good things that when I die, I'm going to be remembered as a good person. Is that good enough for you? That's not good enough for me. You see, when you go into the world, you understand that there is this, uh, this, this illumination, this, this ignition where it goes from theory into practice to then lifestyle, of understanding that there is never a more important person in this world than the person standing right in front of you at any given time. There is this illumination and this hunger to make this world a better place to understand that we should not be complacent in just hoarding things and giving our children everything they want, when they want it, how they want it, because that only boosts entitlement and a sense of pride and selfishness and greed, which then subliminally puts our succession compass on a north of money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame, and fortune, Position, getting a job, climbing up the ladder, getting married, having kids, and having grandkids. Is there something more? And so with 2 billion people going hungry today and about 70 million human traffic slaves in the world, yes, how do we love our world? How do we love our world? What happens when you don't get your miracle? Because your miracle may not come. You be one. You be one. And some of us need to wake up and get a little bit more courageous and a little bit more uncomfortable and a little bit more generous. I want you to know that dreams come true. I want you to know that I want you to achieve your goals and your dreams. But when we talk about purpose, it's making the world a better place. Period. Period. 
I never thought that I would ever be someone living in purpose. When I was a kid and I told my mom and dad, hey, mom and dad, why was I born this way? They're like, we don't know why, but God does. And he didn't talk to me. He didn't talk to me. And so I went through depression. I looked at everyone. They looked at me. I saw they had arms and legs. I didn't have arms and legs. My brother and sister had arms and legs. I didn't have arms and legs. No one knew why I was born this way. No one knew that I was going to be born this way until I was actually born. And kids would come up to me and ask me, what happened? I say, cigarettes. <laughs> it was a very effective anti-smoking campaign. <laughs> and I go to the stores and I say, mom and dad, I want that. They never bought me anything I wanted from the store. You want to know why? Because they knew that if they gave me everything I wanted, when I wanted it, how I wanted it, they would actually ill-prepare me for the world. So they said, figure it out. Can you say that, those three words? Figure it out. Go. Figure it out. figure it out. Get your own money. Buy it yourself. You don't have money? Try figure it out. So then I picked up the vacuum cleaner with my shoulder and my chin, and I vacuumed the house, and I got $2 a week, and I wanted a $15 toy that I saw at the mall, and I knew that I would have to work hard for eight weeks to actually save up 16 bucks. And when I finally got my 16 bucks, I went back to the store, and I looked at that toy, and I'm like, Is this what I really want? And of course I bought it. I loved it. <laughs> but it was amazing. I mean, the fact that I was able to work for money. Do you know it's good to work for money? Can someone tell Gen Z that? <laughs> it is good to work for money. And it was amazing because it taught me how to set goals. You know, we could talk about all day long about purpose and making the world a better place. You ain't going to do anything until you actually do something. And you just think about one day, I wonder what, what, what would you do with all the money in the world? What would you do if you had a million dollars to actually give away? Oh, we don't think about that because a million bucks, well, that's, that's just too much money. Really? Why? 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 Why can't you not be a multimillionaire? Why can't you not be a multi-billionaire? You see, our problem as human beings is if we're in the tech space, I want to be like Elon Musk. Why do you say that? Go beyond him. What do you think Elon Musk said to himself when he was achieving what he did. Do you think Nikola Tesla died with some dreams that were untold and dreams that were unachieved? You see, the people, Zig Ziglar once said, aim your goals and dreams to the heavens so if they miss, they're still up there with the stars. You are the person that's actually stopping your full potential because you can't even dream big yet. And it starts with writing down your goal. Write down your dream and put it somewhere. Google what a vision board is. Put up what you want. What do you want? You want a Maybach Mercedes? Put that up on your wall. You want to sponsor some kids? Good. At age 19, I sponsored 10. We've given away $4 million to the poor and needy between me and my family and the nonprofit organization. If a man without arms and legs is dreaming for the heavens, then why do you think you're different? You actually have an advantage. You have limbs. It's amazing. We got to wake up. This is the time to move. This is the time to double down. This is not the time to figure out who of, of you agree with me. And if I agree with you on blah, 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 can we get unified on making the world a better place? Can we do that? Can we do that? When I was a kid, I never thought that I'd actually be happy. I never thought that I would, you know, ever talk about hope. Hope wasn't for me. No way. It didn't make any sense. How can a man without arms and legs 
be independent. How am I ever going to get a job? I'm never going to get married. You know, you see girlfriends and boyfriends holding hands. I'm like, I'm never even going to get married. Even if I got married, I can't even hold my wife's hand. You know what I realized today? I don't need to hold my wife's hand. I need to hold her heart. You want to see a photo of me and my wife? Check it out. Her name is Kanae, Japanese name. She's half Japanese, half Mexican. We call that Japsican. <laughs> it was love at first sight. I looked at her. She looked at me. I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> Check this photo out. Next. It's beautiful. My four kids. Our four kids. This photo was three years old. Uh, Kyoshi is now 10. Dayan, seven. Olivia and Ali, twin girls. Identical twin girls. I don't know if you know this. It doesn't matter about your lineage or your, what do you call it, genealogy to fraternal twins. This is identical. Identical twins can happen to any woman in a pregnancy, a third of a percent chance. You get two for one amazing. Daddy already is the shortest man in the house. Olivia and Ali, they're five years old. They just graduated pre-K. Beautiful family. Me and my wife, we know there are half a million kids in America, not in Africa, in America, waiting for a home. You know they're closing down so many foster care facilities so much they're putting foster kids in homeless shelters in Texas. This border crisis human trafficking has actually brought in now 700% more human trafficking in Texas. Did you know that? Oh, we can't talk about that. That's political. No, it's moral. You know, it's moral. If I'm angry at anybody, I'm angry at the church. I'm disgusted with sometimes calling myself a Christian because the Christians, 100,000 churches in America representing $498 billion worth of debts for buildings that were half empty in the last couple of years and we can't pick up a half a million kids? Are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I represent on a board 140,000 churches, $300 billion worth of tithing money. We can't pick up a half a million kids. It's interesting, guys. Are we delusional or are we just fake? One of the two, I don't know. I don't know about you, but when you know someone's authentic, someone's authentic. You know someone's practicing what they preach. You know exactly who they are from a mile away. And I don't want to be fake, and I'm certainly not delusional. I make goals. You want to hear the best motivational tool for you today? Would you like that? Can I tell you? Ready? Three things. Hone in on this skill. Ready? 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 Set goals. Number one. The three sub lists is short term, mid term, long term. Short term, mid term, long term. Short term, listen, is 45 days. Have a meeting with yourself every 45 days. Take yourself seriously. Take yourself seriously a little bit more. You're the only one that can actually address this. You're the only one that can actually motivate you. You're the only one that actually can help you be who you want to be because you can tell me till you're blue in the face what you want and what you're hoping for and what you're doing. But until you actually write down, what are you going to do over the next 45 days? 10 goals, go for it. Right, not right now, but tonight, write down 10 things that you're going to try to achieve. Well, in what? Well, I'm going to give you a grid of life, okay? The grid of life, six factors for a full life. Write this down, six factors for a full life. Number one is faith. Got it? Number one is faith. Number two is family. Number three is friends. Number four is finance. You with me? Good? Faith, 
Family, friends, faith, family, friends. What did I say? Finance, uh, fitness, and fun. That should be six. Is that six? To me, look, I've done 3,500 speeches in front of 9.8 million people. My largest crowd was 800,000 people. I've met 25 presidents and prime ministers. And the next time I'm in a, next time I'm in a presidential meeting, I'm in a room in Budapest in Hungary with 20 presidents and prime ministers with Viktor Orban of Hungary in Budapest. I meet with world leaders. I was just with 70 rabbis yesterday. When you look at all types of different people and you go around the world, you actually realize one thing. We are all the same in the fact of our human element and the sixth grid is pretty much universal. When something doesn't feel right, oh, I have depression. Yes, it's real. Yes. But don't go straight to that. Something just doesn't feel right. I don't feel the zest for life. There's something wrong with me. No, there isn't. It's called life. People go from sugar high to sugar high to sugar high, and then they crash. Something's wrong. Yeah, you've been eating sugar. <laughs> Time to get real. Faith, why is faith important? The acronym for faith, F-A-I-T-H, full assurance in the heart. What does that mean? That despite what you know, despite what you see, despite what you're feeling right now, by faith, full assurance in the heart, because God says so in the Bible, you can overcome all things. You can become more than a conqueror. You can understand that he can give me arms and legs, and I have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case he does. But I don't need arms and legs to stand in front of the gates of hell and redirect traffic and actually preach the gospel that Jesus is Lord and hell is real and certainly heaven is too. It's amazing. It's amazing. I've seen miracles. I've seen blind people, seeing deaf people, hearing lame people walking, exorcisms, moon worship is falling down. They can't even look me in the eyes. Little bit extreme. Well, that's the truth, honey. I've seen it. It's real. Practically, though, outside of spiritual, you've got these things called short-term goals. Can I encourage you for a second? Look at these steps. Very small. Have you ever realized in your life how much we really change every six months? A little bit, by a little bit, by a little bit. Same thing with goals. You know, it's funny how if you don't track your goals and you don't track your progress, you become very discouraged. I went through depression in February 2021. I had to go through counseling. I needed 10 hours of counseling from a professional to talk to them about what happened to me in 2002, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2009, 2011. Took 10 hours. I'm the motivational speaker. I'm the preacher. I needed counseling. I want you to know that when you are going through depression, it is good to talk to somebody. And some of us never get healed. Find healing with family, with friends, with finance, with fitness, with fun. Figure out what you're going to do over the next 45 days. When you achieve it, cross it off and give yourself a little pat on your back. You could spend 10 grand to have a coach, or you could just simply do that. That's the secret. Sorry, Scott. 
But if you're actually a diligent and you love yourself enough to actually give yourself a chance to become maybe a multimillionaire or multi-billionaire, why do I talk about money? You want to know why money is important? Because it's important to all of us. You can't give from what you don't have. These are the principles that my mom and dad always taught me. At age 10, I tried to commit suicide. I tried to drown myself in my bathtub because I was convinced that there was no hope or future for me. At age 13, I hurt my little foot playing soccer so bad. I couldn't walk for three weeks. I felt disabled for the first time. At age 15, I gave my life to Jesus. At age 17, I was up in front of my school doing an oral presentation. Now, at that time, I'd already been learning from my dad. You know what my dad told me? You don't have arms and legs. You got a brain. Use your brain. Figure it out. He told me it's good to work for money. You know what also he told me? It's better for money to work for you. At age 16, I went to the stock market. At age 17, I went to options trading. At age 19, I bought my first real estate house. At age 21, I graduated with a double major in a Bachelor of Commerce in Financial Planning and Accounting. It was helpful. But never did I realize that I'd be a speaker. You know that Google says that public speaking is the biggest fear in the world. Do you know that? I'm so proud of the young woman who was up here. Is it Jay? Amazing. She, you, you're really good. Your dad, eh. I'm just poking you, John. Nah, but it was so cool. You know, like I could, I could compete in math. I could compete in chess. So I got really good. Yeah. Couldn't run, couldn't throw a football. So I did this speech and this janitor who was cleaning the toilets at my high school, 61-year-old Arnold. He comes up to me and he says, hey, congratulations. You're now vice president of the school. I said, yes, thank you very much. He said, you know what? You're going to be a world speaker. I said, what? He said, you're going to speak around the world. I said, and speak about what? He said, your story. I said, what? He said, your story. I said, I don't have a story. He says, yes, you do. I said, no, I don't. And it was the end of the conversation. It was weird. It was awkward. It was like weird. Next day, he's like, Nick, speak. I'm like, no. And I walk away. Next day, he looks at me. I'm looking. I'm walking away. He starts running after me like this. I'm like, dude, what is up with this guy? This guy is annoying. And he says, listen, I want to actually organize your first speech. He said, no, for three months. And I said, yes. And I got up in front of six of my peers. I didn't know what I was going to say. My palms were sweaty. My knees were shaking. It was crazy. Like the second biggest fear in the world is death. So some people would rather die than become a speaker. Okay. And I'm speaking, and these kids are like crying. I'm like, they're crying. Like, they just want to make me feel good. I don't know. I don't understand. They're like, that was really good. I said, oh, thank you. And they said, can you speak again? And then I started getting these invitations. Between ages 17 and 19, I spoke 12 times, and even churches would come up, pick me up, take me to the church, come back. One night, I was come back really late, like 11.35 p.m. My mom was waiting for me. I come home. She's there. She's got her arms crossed like this. And she's looking at me. I get dropped off by these people. She says, Nicholas, we need to talk. I said, okay. So we go. We sit down. We talk. She said, what's going on? I said, what do you mean, Ma? I don't know, but I want to know the truth. Tell me what you're doing. I said, what do you mean? She said, I don't know. These strangers, they come, they pick you up, they take you for a couple of hours. When you come back, you're smiling, they're crying. <laughs> what are you doing? And then they give you cash. 
What's up with this cash? Are you making them feel sorry for you? I said, no. I said, I'm speaking. She says, speaking about what? She said, I said, my story. She says, you have a story? I said, I think so. Why are they crying? I said, I don't know. You're going to do what dad told you, right? Yes, yes. I'll do accounting and financial planning. My dad was very smart. My dad was very smart. He told me I need to make a million bucks real quick, start a couple companies, and have employees to be my hands and feet. He wanted me to go beyond him. And by the grace of God, seven years before he died, he was already on my payroll, fully retired. My mom is still alive, 13 years, fully retired on her limbless son's payroll. Why? Because he actually dreamed. Because he actually wrote it down. Because he actually read books. And after one book, I closed it and I said, you know what? I'm going to make my first million by 25. And I did it by 27. I'm going to buy my mama convertible. I wrote that down. The short-term goals, the mid-term goals, the long-term goals. Do you want to know what my long-term goal is? Would you like to know my long-term goal? I have 16 million social media fans. And if Facebook and Instagram were not as corrupt as they are, I would have 40 million. I've been on television to 2.8 billion people, 3,500 stages. And we can complain about it or you create your own solution. But I'll say it this way. Could it be too crazy to dream? I'm 40 years old. I'm semi-retired from speaking, actually. I'm done because I want to reach 8 billion people and 8 billion people won't necessarily need Nick to go on another 35,000 stages. I'm smarter than that. I have accountability partners to make sure I never sacrifice my purpose for my family. I don't know if anyone said that up here, but I'm going to say it that way. Don't you dare sacrifice your family for your purpose. Your family is your purpose. I couldn't. Couldn't couldn't give a crap how many people you fed if you never relentlessly try to bridge the bridge between you and your son in friendship. We got it wrong. Wrong. Completely wrong. Your son don't need opportunities as much as your son needs a dad. There are seasons, and I'm in a season where I can and I do. Because I pushed hard. I set goals. I take my wife on a date once a week. Me and my wife ask each other three questions every single month. Ready? Honey, what am I not doing that you want me to start doing? Question number two, what am I doing you want me to stop doing? Question number three, what do you want me to keep on doing that you like me doing? Wow, what an epiphany. It's not rocket science. I love my wife more than I love my kids. I love my kids more than I love my mission and purpose. And I love God more than I love my wife. In that order. And when you take yourself and your dreams seriously, when you're a Titanic on an ocean like I was in some way, shape, or form, in an illustrative way, if you don't like my doctrine, don't handcuff me, you can't anyway. But imagine if you're on a Titanic and the Titanic sinks pretty much with 
What has happened in the last three years has been very difficult for everyone. You know why these short-term, mid-term, long-term goals are really important? I'll tell you why. Because when the tank, when the Titanic, the ship that you're on, sinks, sinks, and you're on a life raft and you got to paddle, you can paddle, but if you ain't seeing any landmarks, you ain't paddling forever. Yes? These short-term goals, hear me right here, right now. This is how you can also get out of depression. When you cross off the short-term goal that you just achieved, it's actually you paddling by a landmark. It motivates you. So the first thing to get out of depression is actually set goals because you actually achieve more than you think. Do you know how much you could do three hours on a Saturday morning? You could write a book. You could go and help someone else in the street. You can go feed the homeless. To get out of depression, you need to talk to someone. You need to set goals, help someone else in need, and take one day at a time. And if you need medication for a little bit, go grab some medication. If that's what you need, go and get what you need. Don't love yourself in a loving myself way. But everyone take a deep breath in. Go. And out. From what I know today, I'm pretty healthy. I could have cancer in my body and not know it, though. You have already breathed after that long deep breath without even thinking about that next breath and we breathe and we take life for granted so when was the last time you gave your wife a hug when was the last time you gave her flowers when was the last time you actually massaged her stinky feet would you just pick up your underpants and socks that's like sex to her do you understand you know what i'm talking about guys it's amazing I didn't know it was that important. When you know what you believe and what is important to you, then take it seriously and move. I want you to... Oh, what did we do? We haven't finished. What were we going to get you to write down? What did you do? You did the six grid... First one is set goals. Cool. So I'm giving you three points. All right? Three points. The second point. So you got that? The short term, mid term, long? You got that? Good, great, beautiful. Second thing. Change obstacles into opportunity. Oh, I didn't finish that one th thought. A lot of people know me around the world. I asked you if you wanted to know my long-term goal. My long-term goal is to inspire 400 million people giving a dollar a day to actually alleviate suffering of humankind, which is about $2.8 billion a week, which is about $146 billion a year that I want to steward. And I've written out 140, sorry, 106 ways in how the human being can suffer. You want to know why I think money is important? Because when you have money, you can actually build hospitals and schools and houses and give away cars. That's my long-term goal. I don't know what yours is, but I definitely don't want to sacrifice my family for that. Second thing, obstacles or opportunities. Ready? This is the coolest thing. Ready? I didn't know how to be a speaker. I didn't know how to market myself to become a speaker. I didn't have a website. I didn't have business cards. I didn't have much at all. But when at age 19, I was hugged by a teenager during a speech, she interrupted my speech. She was weeping. Everyone heard her weep. And I was only speaking for seven minutes and halfway through that speech, everyone heard her weep. People were crying. She put up a hand. She said, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Can I come up there and give you a hug? And in front of everyone, she came and she hugged me and she cried on my shoulder and she said, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
No one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. And that's when I knew I was born to be a speaker. But how are you going to speak if you have no invitations? So I did cold call, cold, yeah, cold calls, American accent, cold calls. <laughs> try, try, I've been here for 20 years and I still can't say it properly. Um, cold calls, okay. Invited myself to schools to speak. And no, 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 no. 52 no's. And I finally got a yes. You know, I realized, you want to know why many of you give up on your mission for finding your purpose? Because you don't see failure as your classroom. It's interesting when you break up the word fail, I don't know if you like fishing. I love, love fishing. Lure, right? Lure. Fail. Lure. Ooh. Interesting. If you can be convinced that you're a failure, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fail. It's just a lure. Do you understand? If failure is your classroom, that was fresh. I've never said that, never thought of that until this moment. So I'll tell you that right now. It's very interesting. You ain't a failure, so stop looking at yourself like one. Who hasn't failed? Let's be real. Let's be humble about it. Are we not all learning? Do we not all have the same classroom? Oh, I'd like to learn from other people's failure. Good. Guess what? You won't. Sugar. Well, I don't know how to. Well, then figure it out. I want to learn about stock trading and making 20% per trade. Well, it actually exists. There's books. There's seminars. I want to be a multimillionaire in real estate so I can give away houses. Good. There's other people who've done it. Go find out more about it. I want to be a speaker. I want to be as good as Nick. Wrong. Go beyond me. Let's go. It's up to you. It's fun to dream. It's fun to fail. I've got six companies, 25 employees. Love it. Love entrepreneurship. Want to know why? Because we fail so many times along the way. And then we get back up. So what's your long-term dream? What are your obstacles? Don't see marketing as a barrier if it's a lack of understanding. See it as an opportunity to grow. You don't know how to speak. It's not a barrier. It's an opportunity to learn. I love this life. For as long as you're breathing, you can learn. And if someone else learns it, sorry, so can you for the most part. Third thing. Never give up. And never underestimate the power of you just living from day to day. You may never be a speaker. You may never be an author. I've been a best-selling author in 21 countries. Big deal. You don't need to be an author. You don't need to be a speaker. When you go to the grocery store, if you still go through the grocery store, I know we don't anymore. It's a bad example. But the next time you go out into public, <laughs> look people in the eye. Kiss, you never know what prayer they just prayed. God, no one notices me. Can I pray for you? No, no. Well, when I get in my car, I'm going to pray for you anyway, so you might as well tell me what you want. A 
I'm pretty excited that we live in such a terrible, evil, dark, dark time. It's disgusting what's happening around the world. It's disgusting. It's ridiculous. I don't even watch the news anymore. I haven't watched the news for 31 days. Deliberately. Because it sucks. What I love about people like Davin, Scott Miller, people who put this on, is they never underestimate the power of a seminar or a speech or a connectivity of an inspiration to actually bring you up and ignite you into a full, purpose-filled life. I kind of have a feeling there's at least one person who have lost their spark and there's a little spark, little amber warming up in the heart, just a little one. There's a couple of you who actually finally might admit that you're addicted to stuff like pornography or alcohol or selfishness to a point where you know it's stopping your purpose given, your God-given purpose. And you can cover that up. You can cover that secret affair. You can cover up whatever you think you can cover up, but you can't cover up anything from you. And for as long as there's no light, there's no light, so get to the light. Because you're stopping you so one more deep breath in and out may I pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit We thank you, God, that when we don't get a miracle, we can still be one. We thank you, God, that when we run away a million miles an hour in the wrong direction, you run after us even faster. God, we pray for hearts to be healed, addiction to be broken, and fear to be gone. We ask, God, you'd help us to never give up. To know you, to love you, and to love the world in a way that makes the world a better place. Forgive us, heal us, bring us forward. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been a pleasure and an honor. I'm a minute early. Do you want me to go for another minute? I think we're good. Are we good? <laughs>